Shaw, Shaw, no, sorry, uh, into a vibrant new mixed income community, kind of like where I'm at right now as part of the Pergos. Uh, Hinoki uh, is located at East Yester Way and 10th Avenue South. Hinoki features 136 units of uh, housing affordable to people with low incomes. Its sustainable design includes rain gardens around the per, uh, perimeter and, uh, of the building to filter rainwater back into the ground instead of the storm sewer. Should be interesting to see how that, how that goes. Um, the photobolic panels to prevent solar, uh, to provide solar panel to the building and energy saving appliances and ventilation systems. Residents will have access to a larger, uh, large center courtyard. Okay, and this made it nice. Now I want to get to the crust of what I was trying to get to. With the completion of Hinoki, Shaw is well over half, uh, halfway towards replacing the 561 Yesler Terrace public housing units uh, previously on this site with the new apartments for extremely low income residents in addition to Replacing all of the older units, more than 1,100 additional affordable housing or homes are being built, along with more than 2,500 market rate rental apartments developed by private development partners. So my my thought on that whole thing so far is, now, 561 is, isn't the address, it's the unit, I believe. Uh, and they replaced it with uh, 1,100 uh, additional affordable homes, but there'll be 2,500 market rate rental apartments developed by private development partners. So instead of, instead of, yeah, this is where I have a problem because to me, the math doesn't seem right, but it's also it is more than what they had before. Um, but it also seems like they they had torn down uh, they had torn down at a for a I guess dilapidating uh, affordable housing uh, units. And replaced it with um, 1,100 uh, additional affordable homes, but instead of um, but instead of building maybe half of what would have been you know comparable to 2,500, uh, 2,500, they did um, well, maybe it's a little less, not by much, but yeah, apparently it looks like it could be more well, more than what they had. But I'm saying that there they are at least what looks like 400 um, affordable uh, homes, less than half of what the market rate is. So while it is a step up in regards to like in between as far as numbers wise, it's not quite. I mean, it's like 99% to like the equivalent of the 2500 market rate. I mean. But we'll have to find out what happens there. Um, another thing I wanted to check out, as I said, uh, I've been seeing for the longest time that when you have when you have um, when you have more more uh, 
more capacity for more building and you start building that, rents will go down one way or the other because there's more there, there, there's more inventory. Is is I, I had to equate it to the same way as you go to a grocery store and there's more of a product they have to lower the price in order to be able to get rid of the product. So so they could replace it with either a different product or more of the same product, uh, depending on what the inventory is like. It would depend on what the uh, what the I guess supply of that uh, product is. In this case, it's the housing market. Now. Seattle, we got priced down in Seattle from Seattle in uh, 2019, I believe. Our rent was like close to 1900 I think. And at the time, we both had jobs. Well, no, I'm sorry. She had a job. I'm, I was on Social Security, still am. Anyway. Um, but according to this, let's see. This person's rent is going from twenty seven ninety five for Ravenna apartment. Now, this article I don't I don't think says if it's her and other people or just her, but according to this article, she's a, she's a stay at home person who obviously uh, works remotely, and apparently she has a decent job as a web developer. Good for her. Um, but it was twenty seven ninety five for I'm guessing in one bedroom, um, because I don't think it actually states. Uh, so you went, oh, yeah, one bedroom apartment in Ravenna, a neighborhood of Seattle, for three years looking to stay, uh, stay flexible as she transitioned into full, um, full remote work in a more affordable city. Yeah, okay, okay. So while she, okay, while she was flexible, she transitioned into a full, uh, fully remote, uh, work in a more, okay, where is that picture from? Anyways, but the flexibility came at, at a price. Every six months, uh, my uh, her rent will go up. Sometimes by a little, sometimes by a lot, uh, a few hundred. And so the third, now that seem that sounds like the that the uh, owners of the property, their mortgage rates seem to be fluctuating. I could be wrong about that, but that what it seemed like. If it goes up or goes down, uh, I guess depending on the. Market value of it. Anyway, uh, let's see, da, da, da. Uh, the 32 year old web developer, yeah, has uh, has been brutal and I've been feeling very discouraged until recently. That is, and Perez says she just got a break on her rent for the first time ever in September. Her landlord texted her that he was reducing the rent from $27.95 to $26.55. That's more than 100 bucks, right there. It seems like. Uh, many tenants across America are also breathing a uh, sigh of relief as rents drop from the record highs for the first time in nearly two years. What's going on? During the first year of COVID, the rental market froze and people postponed their, market, uh, their moves. And we didn't. Then in 2021-22, a U.S. occupancy rate rose to record levels. The market was on fire, well, because the majority of people went out, uh, went out with their move. And it was on fire, and many renters were priced at double-digit percentage rate increases, and that was us. Uh, well, not, not in 2021, anyway. Uh, let's see. Now, we, now, as we enter the third year of the market since COVID, there's a very different story. Occupancy rates are in the free fall. Vacancies are rising. The fear of recession is biting, and rents have plateaued. At the rapid rate of increase, we saw over the past two years, there was only one way for, for rents to go up and go, and that was down as the market takes a deep breath. That, and I mean, I think it is. Yeah. So total units so far, as far as permits and structures and stuff of that nature. Um, number of structures with five units or more, 1,952. That's 19, 1,952 new apartments uh, that were structured, that, that were built. Let's <clears throat> uh, see. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's see, uh, three and four units, 1882, uh, uh, for three or four, five or more, okay, no, wait a minute, number of structures with it, with the units, or, okay, so that's more, so, oh, wait, anyway, so five, five, uh, zero, three, nine, two, now this is total in the United States with regards to that, uh, but, see, yeah, 
Actually, actually, the total is 12.0838 for a total as far as that bar goes. Let's see. And let's go down. Uh, let's see. Now, what the heck is this again? Uh, oh, year to date. Okay. <laughs> year to date. Let's just go to that instead, which is probably not a lot of people do. Uh, as you can, either way, as you can see, uh, the the year to date is actually lower in regards to the five units or more. The three units, uh, the 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 well, three three and four units have actually looks like gone up by substantial. Uh, two uh, two bedroom units have gone up as well. One bedroom units have also gone up. So inventory is growing, which means that more of the inventory, the more it's uh, companies that own those buildings are forced to drop their rents because there's more to be had. If there was less to be had, and they would be able to justify their the rent the rental increase. They can't be doing that. Now let's see, uh, Ohio, where I'm at. Now year to date. Year to date is uh, on. I think, I think this was again. It was like five, five or more. Twenty two, twenty six to ninety six, twenty one. So it's actually gone up. It seems, it looks like. Uh, well, let's just say. Let's see. Either way, if you look at it, it's gone up. So even though rents in year to year over year have gone up slightly in Ohio, they've actually the. Building permits for those have gone up. Now, will it be low income? Who knows? Will it be affordable? Who knows? But if those aren't affordable, then other that forces other places to be affordable because there'll be more demand for them. Anyway, let's see. This is a AIA. I'm not really sure what that means, but let's see. Okay, anyway, so let's see. This is Consensus uh, Dodge Construction Network. So uh, this is what they're forecasting as far as uh, construction. Uh, it's it's going to go up, obviously, as far as it seems like this is going up, period, except for retail and other commercial. That seems like it's going down. And yeah, I can see uh, Target, Walmart, and other places that may be closing stores. Some of the some of the people that have really bad management are, are will be closing their stores. Um, let's see, offices will apparently go up as far as that part goes. Um, hotels, the that, now that that's a given as far as that part goes. That usually happens. Industrial total, okay, that's that's gone down slightly. Uh, at least forecast wise, in, institutional total uh, is actually above four point four. Uh, associated builders and contractors, uh, yeah, this is this is the trade portion that I, that I look at, or at least try to learn more about, because I know that trade, as far as construction or just building in general. Have gone down. They're, they're more like minor uh, degrees in some in some cases to engineering and other things of that nature. So, this looks like health is going to go down slightly because there's it should it should, no, it should go up. But anyway, uh, so institutional total uh, going to go up six points, and that's forecast from the 20, 2023. Everything here it seems like okay, religion, whatever. Uh, Public safety, okay, that's, that's going to be a concern out of the way. Wait, okay, Wells Fargo Securities. Okay, so that's, that's I don't know, this part, I'm not really understanding that, but anyway, it looks like at least construction, trade, and stuff of that nature should be going up. So, I mean, a lot of this stuff I do understand, but as far as how, how these, how these, how these resources are categorized them, I'm not really familiar with, but I try. So, anyways, the point being is, as we have been saying, 
and the MMT world. All this uh, was supply chain disruption and would go up as things open up and as things start moving again. So that's precisely what's going on as far as that part goes. Uh, and tonight I'm going to a ranked choice voting uh, nationwide committee uh, uh, meeting um, at the local library. So well, that should be fun for tonight. Uh, let's see, that's pretty much going. On, that's pretty much what's going on as far as my life goes on that one. But if you're looking for merchandise or looking to um to support this channel, then go here and you can buy a, a cheap a, a cheap thing as you can if you want to, or if you have a cash app, if you want to donate, uh, go to cash app slash money sign you down MMT. And you can send me up to five, you know, five bucks or up to how much you want as far as upward goes. Uh, and... I was shocked that you do not even know me. Sorry about the interruption. I forgot there was a, a live thing going on there. Anyway, uh, one more thing, I guess, is we look at the Fed's uh, F88, no, uh, Fed's 8H report, which basically tells you how much. Um, uh, real estate loans have gone up or gone down. Real estate has gone up. Uh, real estate, uh, wait, residential real estate loans gone uh gone up. Revolving home equity loans gone well, gone down like about one percent or whatever. But anyway, closing in residential loans uh gone up. Commercial real estate loans gone up. Yeah, things have gone up as far as that part goes. And in regards to the interest rates, and yeah, we we have a very we have a slightly less actually not slightly but way less deficit spending right now due to the interest payments. But it's still it, it's still enabling things to happen in regards to certain programs being able to run quite smoothly. Um. So what I was thinking, and I could be way off base here, but I was thinking was it's kind of a push pull effect, and that, and they talk about that uh, in the MM, MMT macroeconomic book, uh, the pushing of interest rates and pulling of prices down as far as commodity prices and as far as uh, um, pricing for uh, imports and exports in that case. That's where you have the, the the push and pull. The they try to push up the rates to stifle um or stifle spending, but that's not happening right now. Uh, and the people who have, who had the money to keep that from happening overall, and the people who were able to save the 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 money when the first stimulus happened, because the first stimulus went to everybody, no matter your income bracket. Um. The second was smaller, as far as I remember, it was went to those who needed it for uh, for uh, for future credit creation in regards to having to take out uh, business loans, home loans, whatever the case may be. So basically, they went to uh, savers, and then they went to those same people who were going to spend anyway. And so, yeah, and that's what happens. Far the poor goes, I say. If we have more focused spending, and if people in office, as I as I pointed out yesterday, would know more about functional financing instead of Keynes, instead of uh, Friedman, who years later uh, repudiated his own his own quantitative theory of money, uh, most, most theory, if. And I found it quite surprising that someone who came from state legislature, which at a state level, they do require taxes to function. At a federal level, they don't because they are the core issuer of the currency. A state cannot issue their own currency. Uh, they did the kind of and they make go to jail, hopefully. Um, but anyway, but the, when I saw that yesterday, you look you look at my YouTube channel uh, yesterday for that. He said he came from a business and a state legislator. 
background, meaning he he's only used to knowing what a business which has a budget and a state which has a budget. And majority of the time when they have a budget sort, uh, shortfall, they have to sell state bonds either to uh, to the federal government <clears throat> or to a investor of some kind, whether it be international or local investor, like a or maybe outside the state, maybe outside a country investor, like an Amazon or whatever. I myself, I personally think that uh, they should never go outside and invest in regards to Amazon or whatever else, unless they specify that the tax breaks that they are given is, are not more than what they would take in as far as local and state taxes, because if they did that, they would lose money. And other things would have to go up to replace that. Anyway, that's and that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I'd like to thank you for listening. Hopefully you were able to hear me because again it's a new microphone. I would be, I'll do a playback on here, obviously, but yeah. Learn MMT, learn monetary theory. And that'll teach you how to follow exports, imports. That'll teach you how to follow what interest rates do you know, teach you how what the national debt is based on the national debt is money that hasn't been taxed out and also money has been put in the u.s treasury bonds the uh the u.s has a has a has a a huge amount in u.s treasury non-marketable funds so when they redeem it that means that they cash them out for spending and whatnots but none of that is tax tax dollar spending. All that is deficit spending. So anyway, thanks for listening. Peace out for now, and I'll talk to you later on.